This month's fossil is Allosaurus, one of my favorite dinosaurs. All right, I got something really special today for this month's fossil. So I got a really cool fossil for this month's uh, fossil. This is Allosaurus. This is a arm of an Allosaurus and one of my most favorite dinosaurs. And this was a specimen that was collected about 20 years ago um, and prepared by Ann Elder, who is a paleontologist at Dinosaur National Monument and described by Dan Churi in a paper that came out in 2001. And this is a hand and wrist of an Allosaurus. So over here we have this bone here is the humerus, which is the upper arm bone. And we have the ulna and the radius. We have two little bones in the wrist. This is the radial and semilunate. And then we have the three metacarpals that make up sort of the palm of the hand. And then we have the phalanges that come out here. The big claw is missing on this hand. Um, we just have the second phalange, but we have the other two claws up here. So there would have been two other phalanges and a big claw over here. This might have been part of that claw um, on the hand. But this gives us a really cool picture of what's going on in the wrist. Now dinosaurs are related to birds and one of the neat things about this wrist is it's sort of a transitional fossil between what you see in um, birds and what you see in earlier dinosaurs. So we have these two bones. This one here that's next to the radius is the radial and it acts as a pulley for a tendon uh, that would allow the hand to move sort of back and forth in this direction. Now this is an important movement for birds in folding their wings and the, and the radial in this Allosaurus provides this really nice uh, pulley kind of system to allow that back and forth movement. Uh, if you ever look at bird wings, that's a very important lever point for the folding of the wing as it folds out and back. Now what Allosaurus has with the semilunate is it doesn't look like a half moon, which is what it looks like in birds, but it looks like it has this double saddle shape. And so there's uh, articulation this direction and articulation this way direction where the bones come together. And this allowed two directions of movement, both the movement in the folding of the wing, but also gripping. So the ability to grip prey. And so with that articulation there, Allosaurus could grip prey with these really strong claws and hand, but it also could fold its wing or its arm, its hand, down uh, like you see in modern uh, birds. And so this would have shifted down and you can kind of see that uh, along there. Now another thing I, I was looking at this specimen is to see if we see any bumps along the ulna. Velociraptor is thought to have feathers because of bumps that are found along the ventral surface of the, um, the ulna. And I don't see any bumps, although there is some looks like there's some little bit of scars on it, but I don't see any real clear indications of bumps uh, that would have come down here indicating that this uh, arm might, might have had some feathers coming down from it like you see in Velociraptor. So we don't see any of that, but we do see this very interesting wrist that's very similar to what we see in birds. So this cast is made out of plaster, which means it's uh, kind of fragile and it's kind of heavy. And I want to use this for educational purposes uh, to take to school groups where it might get, uh, might get handled quite a bit. So instead of taking this plaster uh, cast, I'm going to make a resin uh, cast from this. Um, so I'll cover this in latex and make a mold and then a mother mold and plaster over that. And then we're going to pour in resin so we can get a nice plastic cast that'll be much lighter, and more resistant to uh, transportation and wear and kids handling it and touching it. And so, um, so that's what I'm gonna work on now.
All right, so we've let our cast dry for a few days and it's changed color. It's now kind of an orangish color and it's, uh, able, we're able to peel it up. So, very carefully I'm going to peel this and see if it works. So we got our rubber mold here. Very exciting. All right, so now we have our floppy uh, rubber mold, but because it's so floppy, we're going to make a mother mold of this. So I'm just gonna kind of sit it back on this so that we can uh, then make our mother mold over this. All right, to make the mother load, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add some saran wrap. Probably add a couple layers here. All right, yeah, I put some cardboard down because this will be messy and clean up a little easier. And I'm gonna put on some gloves since I don't want this plaster sticking to my, to my fur. And roll up our sleeves. And I got some cheesecloth here that I can Put over this, kind of like if you uh, if ever broken a bone and had to have a cast made. We're doing kind of the same thing. I made it. Just kind of lay it on here, and. What we want to do is form a nice hard mother mold that will help to hold that floppy latex mold in place when we make the uh, cast. So what I've done here is I flipped over the mold and the mother mold. So we're looking at the bottom, which will now be our top. And so now the trick is going to be to pour the resin that will make the cast into the mold. And I've been very careful to try to make this as level as possible. So hopefully it will... Uh, be thick enough. And I got this great box here to, to work with. And we're definitely going to do this in batches. So this wrist joint in Allosaurus allowed it to do two motions. One is it was able to grip or grab things in this sort of motion, which would be very useful if you're a predator and trying to pounce on prey and grab a hold of it 
and eat uh, a prey item. Now the other motion is a bit unusual, and that is, is that it was able to do a motion that of course humans can't do, but that is to take the hand and move it in this joint so that my pinky would come and touch my, uh, <laughs> my wrist down here. So this motion, this angled motion, is really interesting because it wouldn't necessarily serve any purpose in capturing prey and to be a carnivorous dinosaur but did have a function that is really interesting and was probably a precursor to the development of wings um, that you see in, in later in birds. And I, I brought my uh, really awesome t-shirt to illustrate the evolution from dinosaurs to birds, but this wrist uh, motion had a precursor to flight and for development of the wings. And that has to do with that motion coming out and providing a broader surface for the brooding of eggs. So I'm going to show you why the Allosaurus might have turned its arm that way. It has to do with brooding eggs. This is my chicken. And by keeping the arms folded in there, it tucks the arms away, but it also keeps the arms out and this helps in brooding eggs. Do you have any eggs today? No eggs today. But that's one of the reasons why having your arm fold up like that would be beneficial. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. The rooster. Dinosaur attack. The rooster is there attack me. Man, he is pissed off today. So by being able to bring your arms down like this, it provided a greater surface area to kind of warm the eggs on a nesting, on a nest with the mother nesting. And so by bringing those hands down, this created a wonderful sort of dome over the nest of eggs to keep it nice and warm. And that was what the real purpose of that joint was, was for a, that ability to bend the arm down and provide that dome-like area. Now, possibly Allosaurus was feathered or not. We don't have any direct evidence of feathers in Allosaurus, but there is a good possibility that there would have been feathers coming off of those, those arms like you see in Velociraptor and other later um, theropods. And that would have provided a nice warm surface for those incubating eggs.